This is Antergos Linux with the XFCE desktop. Now, Antergos is basically Arch Linux with a pre-configured desktop interface, and it's a lot easier to install than native Arch Linux, but you get access to the Arch repositories, including the AUR. It originally started out as Synarch with the Cinnamon desktop. Currently, the default desktop is GNOME 3, but it also still comes with Cinnamon, with KDE Plasma 5, with Mate, with XFCE, and with OpenBock. I originally installed the Plasma 5.10.5 desktop and I liked it. It was quite interesting, but simple screen recorder wouldn't work with it. Kazam wouldn't work with it. I haven't been able to figure out why because both of those work with the Plasma 5.10 with the OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, but rather than fight it, I decided to install the XFCE desktop and that worked fine with simple screen recorder. This is the way it looks by default. I'm going to change that. All right, so now I'm back. I've changed the appearance considerably, and I won't go into the details here, but you can look at my video on tweaking Zubuntu, and you'll get some ideas. You can see that I added an additional panel. I replaced the application menu with the whisker menu and I had to download the whisker menu in order to do that. I've changed the theme. I changed the wallpaper to one of my own photographs, but the XFCE desktop is quite configurable and you can literally spend days tweaking it the way you want to. Let's just take a look at what comes with this version. Under Accessories, I have the Application Finder, Archive Manager, Bulk Rename, Calculator, GNOME Disks, HP Device Manager, Mouse Pad, Screenshot, Task Manager, Thunar File Manager, XF Burn, Under development, I have CMake, QT4 Assistant, QT4 Designer, QT4 Linguist, QT4 Dbus Viewer. Under education, I have LibreOffice Math. Under graphics, I have Document Viewer, LibreOffice Draw, Ristretto Image Viewer. Under internet, I have the Avahi SSH server browser, the Avahi VNC server browser, Firefox, and Transmission. By the way, I was able to choose Firefox as the internet browser during installation. Under Multimedia, I have the Parole Media Player, Praha, Pulse Audio Volume Control, the Qt V4L2 Test Utility, Simple Screen Recorder, which I installed myself from the repository, and XF Burn. Under Office, I have Document Viewer and the entire LibreOffice suite. Again, I was able to choose to install the LibreOffice suite during installation. Under Settings, I have Accessibility, Adobe Flash Player, Appearance, Desktop, Display, File Manager, Firewall Configuration, Keyboard, Light Locker Settings, MIME Type Editor, Mouse and Touchpad, Network Connections, Notifications, Panel, Power Manager, Preferred Applications, Print Settings, I have to scroll down here, even though I have the menu extended all the way to the bottom, Qt5 Settings, Removable drives and media, 
session and startup settings editor, settings manager, window manager, window manager tweaks, and workspaces. And under system, I have add remove software, Avahi zero conf browser, bulk rename, deconf editor, manage printing, print settings, software update, task manager, Thunar file manager, and XFCE terminal. Now, as you can see, I added some launchers to the top panel. And in order to do that the easy way, I had to have the whisker menu. If you have the whisker menu, let me go to graphics, for example. I can go to document viewer, and when I right click on that, I have the choice of adding it to favorites, adding it to the desktop, or adding it to the panel. If I click on add to panel, It'll ask me which panel, and I, I'm going to choose the default panel one. Now, there's the document viewer. I'm going to right click and move it over. If you just have the applications menu, you can't do that. You have to add a launcher for each application you want to add to the panel. When I go to Add Remove Software, it's the same PAMIC Software Manager. You can see under Repositories, I have Intergos, Core, Extra, Community, and Multilib. If I go over here under Preferences, and over here to AUR, you can see that I have it on. And actually, I chose that option during installation also. But if I hadn't, you could choose it here. So I'm going to install GIMP. There it is. I'm going to click on Apply. Click on Commit. Now as you can see, it's installing GIMP down here. And it's already installed quite fast. I'm going to try to install the drivers for my printer. I'm not getting a space here, but I'll add one. And here's the CUPS driver for the printer. While I'm here, I can't seem to enter a space character. I'm looking under Brother Cups, and I found Brother Cups wrapper common. So I'm going to apply that. I 
I can look under details here. It says transaction successfully finished. Now I can't actually show you the printer working because I've used up all of my USB slots here, but I've tried it before and I know that it works perfectly. Now with nothing but simple screen recorder going, let me see how my memory use is. I'm using 508 megabytes roughly out of approximately four gigabytes and that's with simple screen recorder running. If I look at about it, XFCE, this is version 4.12. This has been current for some time. So there's nothing really new about XFCE except that there have been improvements under the hood. But in general, the applications are state of the art. For instance, if I go to LibreOffice Calc. About LibreOffice. It's version 5.4.0.3. That's the latest version of LibreOffice Fresh. And so far I haven't had any difficulties at all with Antergos. But the question always remains with Arch and with any rolling release, how long can I keep it going without having something happen that causes it to crash. And I just haven't had it long enough to be able to say for certain how that will go. However, so far it's been working perfectly. And that's a look at Antergos with the XFCE desktop. This is XRAM Tech. Thanks for watching.